Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Jeremy, and today I wanted to talk about my experience with the Camino de Santiago. So, from the 24th of February to the 6th of April, I was away in Spain on a trip called the Camino de Santiago. So this trip starts just on the border of France and Spain at St. John Pied de Port and goes all the way across northern Spain and ends in Santiago. So this trip took about 33 days of walking. I had rest days and whatnot. And yeah, it was a big trip. So we walked about 800k, which is 500 miles around there. And I started the trip not that fit. And it was a challenge at the start. The first day was St. John P. de Port to Roncesvalles. And that was like uphill and you ended up like up high in snow. And yeah, anyway, to get to St. John P. de Port from Brisbane, Australia, I had to fly from Brisbane to Singapore, Singapore to Charles de Gaulle, which is in France. And then from Charles de Gaulle, I caught a plane for, from there to Biarritz. And then from Biarritz, I had to take a taxi to Bayonne, stay the night, and then take a train to St. John P. de Port. So roughly all up, it took about 30 hours to get there from where I live in Australia. So it took a while. And anyway, I wasn't that jet lagged. Started the trip and got off the train. Met a few people who were also doing the Camino. I was going to stay in St. John one night, but instead I started 10.30 a.m. that day. And yeah, it's a lot of walking, you get time to like think things through your head, meet a lot of awesome people, get to experience Spain. I was kind of naive, I went to Spain not knowing any Spanish, apart from just like, hola, por favor, gracias. And yeah, I'm not that great at pronouncing it, but I kind of got my point across. And anyway, it was really cool, picked up quite a bit of Spanish, enough to get me by. Definitely a lot more than I left Australia with, I didn't really bother learning it because I thought, like, this is really naive, like, I thought a lot of Spanish people would speak English, which they didn't, not in this part of Spain anyway, which is fair enough, so I had to learn, like, some Spanish, which was really cool, and yeah, there were people doing the Camino from all over the world, different parts of the globe, a lot of Europeans and Americans, I met some Australians, yeah, just people from everywhere coming together, so it was really cool, you kind of start and you meet people. At the end of each day, you know, throughout the day, people stretch out, they have their own pace of walking. It's not like running, it's just a casual kind of walk. You can, I don't know, some days might take you five hours, some days might take you eight hours, it really depends. And yeah, anyway, you'd meet at like location each night because people would use a guidebook, some people would just walk, and you'd see people from day to day. So you'd, you know, kind of bond together. And at the end, it's like a big kind of family, which is really cool. So yeah, definitely made a lot of good friends on the trip. And I went there thinking I was going to do some uh, like vlogs, videos of the trip. Though I kind of just wanted to reflect and have like a personal time. Instead of kind of thinking, oh I should make a video. Stuff like that. So I kind of just enjoyed myself, stayed in the moment instead of thinking ahead or behind. Just tried to get as much experience out of it as possible. So yeah, it's a pilgrimage, and if you watch my video before I went there, which I uploaded just over a month ago now, I've been back a few days now, but mainly just resting up, because jet lag and, you know, just being tired from the trip. I had sore legs at the end, so yeah. Um, we went through cities such as Pamplona, Burgos, Leon, Santiago, things like that, so it was pretty cool, and yeah. My favorite part was probably... Well, I mean, each day had really good highlights and stuff like that. Like, there was no day that stuck out as being, like, the best. Um, a guy had a quote that today is, like, his favorite day, and then tomorrow will be even better. And then that kind of, like, stuck with me and people I was walking with, so that was cool. Yeah, you meet a lot of interesting people out there. Spanish people were really friendly. At times, if you didn't know the language, they were a bit cold, but, like, 99% of the time, these Spanish people were really outgoing and like really nice like if you're kind of like unsure where to go they'll point you to the right way and yeah so you following arrows and things like that along the way like every five minutes or so you might see an arrow sometimes it stretched out a bit longer but yeah so I thought I'd be walking a lot of this journey by myself but it turns out I almost always was walking with someone and even at times like maybe 15 people kind of you know within the same like sort of distance yeah so 
you can do it by yourself. You can do it with a friend. Some people do it with their dad. Things like that. And yeah, I really recommend it. I thought I'd be doing it when I was 40, but I got to do it when I am 19. I read the book The Pilgrimage by Paulo Coelho when I was 16 or 17. And I was like, I really want to do this trip sometime. So yeah, definitely if you like to, you know, just get out, experience things, do a bit of exercise, uh, Camino is really something cool you can do. You can do different sections and you can start in different places. So it's really something for everyone. I met people of all age groups and yeah, you don't even have to speak the language. There were some people there who could only speak fr like French and things like that. So yeah, it's really interesting. Um, on my Instagram, I upload a lot of pictures from the Camino. So yeah, I didn't record any videos along the way, even though it would have been interesting to do like a day-to-day -day kind of, you know, just vlog and see how I change along the way. But definitely feel like I've grown as a person and definitely recommend doing the Camino. So yeah. Uh, on my Instagram, I just put up different photos. And the cool thing with Instagram is you can geomap, same with Facebook, so it shows you each location the photo is uploaded from. So if you go to my geomap, it shows like the whole route across Spain, kind of stretched out. So yeah, Basque country was really cool, Spanish country cool, like French country, yeah, all that. It was just, it was just awesome. And yeah, even got to climb some hay bales, did things I didn't think I could do. With some American friends, we climbed 11 stacks of hay bales. And I was like, this is dangerous, but they get up there. And then I was like, okay, I can, I can give this a shot. And I was really impressed when I got to the top. So yeah, I didn't think I'd be able to do it, but I could. So just shows you. And one night I want to talk about this. Like, seriously, I could go on about this trip for just hours and hours and hours, but like, there's so much stuff. Some of it's personal, like sharing it, like some people wouldn't relate to it, but yeah, like this story, um, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but myself and Amanda, she's from the UK we walked about 15k with some friends and then they decided they were stopping and this day was Villafranca Villafranco to Osabira probably pronunciations a bit off there uh, these are two towns and anyway it was meant to be a 30k day we got about 15k in we'd been taking it nice and chill nice and shanty and yeah we decided like we'd stay there while the others did and then Amanda and I were like oh there's this really cool vegetarian place up ahead so we're like yeah we'll go and yeah, being a vegetarian, it's kind of a challenge in Spain, but Amanda was vegan, she got through it. Met plenty of other vegetarian girls and stuff, so it was really cool. Just getting to experience like, all the different foods and drinks and stuff like that. And anyway, we keep going and we get to the town that we thought was set and it was closed, so we had to keep walking. And then eventually we got to La Faba, I think it was called, which is kind of high up, there was snow around. And we popped in, we're like, do you think we can make it to Osibura before it gets really dark and we might freeze and die? Because it was like snowing at this point. And she's like, if you think you can do it, you can do it. And that was really powerful words. So like, yeah, we can do this. And then we found a farmer who also said like, you should sleep here because it's getting late. It was like 7.30 at this point. 4.7K to go, I think, or 3.7? Something like that. Anyway, that's normally like an hour of walking. And it was uphill. So the farmer's like, you can do it, but yeah, stay here because it could be dangerous. In Spanish, of course. And yeah, we decided to keep going because we thought we'd have some friends staying up ahead. And turns out we did. So Osabira, from La Faba to Osabira, this took us about an hour and a half or two hours. By the time we got in, it was 9 p.m. We'd been walking through sheer, just like cold, like it was a, just a circle around you. You could only see just a bit ahead. It was like, we took a photo of the Galicia side and everything was just snowing like crazy. So yeah, that really showed you that like, if you believe you can do something, like you can do it. And this was kind of dangerous, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. Like, try it again by like 6 p.m., but like we got 9 p.m. Everyone's like, are you guys crazy? Because it's just like snowing, the path could have been lost, we might have frozen to death, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, we made it and that was important. And that was like one of my favorite nights of the trip. Because it just showed you like what you're capable of if you put your mind to it. Anyway, that's about it. Things to talk about. Like I got tons of stories. Some of them are like shareable. Some of them I probably shouldn't share. One of the nights, um, me and this Hungarian dude, we there was a lot of wine along the way. So anyway, we'd been drinking a bit. Stayed up to like 11 p.m. Everyone was asleep. Like to start off with, there was a group of us drinking, but then they went to bed. Me and the Hungarian dude went out to get another bottle or two. And eventually we go to bed, it's like 12, and then I wake up at 1am, I'm waking up at 1am, someone's screaming, there's been murder, like this French woman's saying that, I'm just like, what's going on, and someone's like, Jeremy, wake up, 
So I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, a torch comes on. I look by the side of my bed, and it's like a big red pool. We'd had pasta for dinner, and it looked like there was an octopus in this big red pool. And people thought it was blood. Like, someone thought someone had been murdered. Anyway, I'd actually vomited and had to get up and clean it. Yeah, it was like, it was pretty bad. It was it was pretty messy. French chick's bra was white, turned to red, because it was on the floor next to it. There were like 20 people in this room. Like, you stay in albergues and stuff like that, so... It's a lot of pilgrims who are doing the same trip, staying in a room together, and, like, I just got and vomited. Some girl from the UK's beanie got, like, all messed up. And a French dude had been walking through it that night to go to the toilet. So I felt a little bad. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not gonna... Not gonna party like that again on this trip. That was, like, night two, I think, La Sonia. Yeah, so it was an amazing trip. Like, I had a really good time. Totally recommend doing it. There's a movie on it called The Way or The Camino. Something like that. There's also a ton of books. Definitely something you should look into if it interests you. Totally recommend it. As I said, you have some ups and downs, but overall it's a really great experience. You get to meet some great people. Check out a great country. It was my first time to Spain. And yeah, overall, it was just a blast. So thank you for watching this video. If you're wondering where I was, basically I put out videos and scheduled them for when I was in Spain. I didn't record anything there. So I was gone for a whole month. It was interesting, I kept away from TVs and phones as much as I could and just really got to experience like the nature around me and just have a really good time, so yeah, that was my experience on the Camino de Santiago. Thank you for watching this video and make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe, photos on my Instagram, you can find the link down below and have a nice day.